Welcome back to Forbidden Knowledge News. I'm your host, Chris Matthew. Today, my guest is Michael Harrell. First, a couple of announcements. Check out our website, ForbiddenKnowledge.News. It's the home of the Forbidden Knowledge Network. This is where you find some of your favorite podcasts from our community, like Raised by Giants, Understanding Propaganda, Day Zero, and more. Forbidden Knowledge News is always available on Rockfin, Odyssey, Rumble, and all podcast platforms. Our social media is Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Rockfin is where you get our premium content. Best of all, you get all the premium content from every creator on Rockfin for only $10 a month. You just go to rockfin.com slash FKN plus. That's R-O-K-F-I-N dot com slash FKN plus or click the link in the description to sign up now. Today, I want to welcome back to the show Michael Harrell. He is a retired carpenter that had a mission to find out how and why people get so wounded and how to fix them. This task was working in his subconsciousness his whole life, and only in 2016 did the full memory of this task become recovered. Michael, welcome back. How you doing? I'm doing good, man. I uh, had a little trouble with Facebook, and I just took, took the stuff was going wrong but it, it's all sorted out now so i feel like i've got a new lease on life it's funny how that stuff works <laughs> well how you, you been for, man you, i'm you, great man i can't complain about anything uh, looking forward to today oh and last time you were on you shared some incredible life experiences and insights that you you learned along the way and today i want to take a, a closer look at some of the aspects that you integrate into your everyday experience one of the we got you, some forget we got some forbidden knowledge that's for sure yeah let's do that uh you got something called harold's law you're going to talk about emotional relief Release, the law of repulsion, and much more here. But Michael, just remind the audience a little bit about yourself before we get started. Okay, uh, I'm just like a regular regular guy. I'm a retired carpenter, and um, but I'm also like a pretty was a, for a lot of my life. I was a pretty heavy duty mystic meditator. I did kriya yoga. I met um, four enlightened men and one enlightened woman. And the mother of everything, which a lot of people don't know who she is at all, but she's uh, like the, if you think of the, the darkness in space, this is the mother of everything. I actually met her and I had an initiation by her. And then I had an init another initiation by a, an enlightened Sasquatch. That was pretty powerful. I'm still doing that meditation today. And I had uh, just a potload of transformative experiences, and uh, I've been on ET craft and you know, friends with the Sasquatch people, and you know, and I spent a lot of my time there was there was a time there for around two years, so I think it was like uh, 20, 2019 and twenty twenty, where where every day every day I would um, wake up from remembering from remembering of uh, the beginning of creation. The beginning of the creation is something that's kind of hard to fathom. You can't really put it in words, but it's just this huge energy that, um, that has a aspects of desire and emotion and, and, uh, and that kind of stuff. So consciousness is the feeling of energy. So this is pre-conscious stuff that I was experiencing. And uh, I actually experienced the beginning of, I actually watched the beginning of creation was the emergence of the God, of God, right? The, of the I am principle. And that took a lot. It was uh, to, to go from nothing into something, which was an identity. Yeah, and uh, the mother of everything is absolute inclusivity and unconditional love, right? Think of that as the field. Mm -hmm. And anything that is, re that is separated from that or that emerges out of that, whether it's a planet, a galaxy, or beings and consciousness, all the stuff that emerge out of that, uh, that field that we call nothing, right? You can't, can't get something from nothing, but in fact, that's how everything is, an emergence. So the first emergence was the God, which was the energy of pure love and, 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 um, and it, it's just like power, right? Mm -hmm. The power that spins the galaxies. And the power that fires up the um, stars, right? That's unconditional love. But it's also, because it's connected to absolute inclusivity, it has everything in it. That means pain and suffering, war and, and uh, 
you know, horrors and things like that, along with, um, what do you call it, all the good stuff. Think of it like this. The universe is, is like 96% uh, empty space. And they say, oh, it has energy in it. And so it says dark energy, dark matter. But it's 96% empty space, right? And then there's 4% that becomes matter. And in that 4%, there's about another 4% that is not unconditional love. It, it's a, it is conditional, fragmented, twisted, perverted love. So um, that's where we get all the dark stuff that we're dealing with today. And this aspect of, the, of absolute inclusivity and unconditional love, the aspect of that is the Greeks hated it. The Greeks hated that shit. Right, because it was all it was all about feelings, and it wasn't about anything logical or mental or anything like that. Even the Kabbalion, right? You know the Kabbalion, they uh, they don't like that stuff either because they say, oh, the first law, first principle is the principle of the mind, but the mind is an emergent property of of uh, consciousness, and consciousness is the feeling of the energy of the infinite, right? So, energy, once it's felt. The feeling of energy is consciousness, yeah, and all all energy has a feeling, and consciousness is the awareness property of space, and space is the location aspect of consciousness. Anyway, yeah. all, what yeah, that what I, that means? Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Ask a question. No, I was just going to say that I highly recommend everybody go back and listen to the first episode we did because you go into great detail about some of these things that you were just discussing. And it's a kind of a, a good base start for people to, to get into what we're going to be talking about today. Well, some people of... people want to know, like, why, where's all this evil come from? Where's these demons? Where's this stuff going from? And every, every um, you know, every video that you put up there's people who have this, this conflict this energy this stuff that's happening and, they, and they're trying to make sense out of it right mm -hmm. and you can't make sense out of it with your mind because the mind is not based on the totality feelings are based on the totality but the mind is only based on little snapshots it looks like this this history was this way but all history was just a slice of the pie all points of view is just a slice of the pie yeah, so you, you're never getting the whole thing. The whole thing, you have to back out to the whole, you have to, there's this exercise, okay? Here's a good exercise for everybody can do. Let's do like, uh, you know, a little therapy here. Expand yourself out till you're bigger than the universe. It takes a little few seconds or a few trials to get that. So expand yourself out till you're bigger than, than the universe. And, uh, and then, along with that, feel your immortality. Because to understand what's going on, you have to be bigger than the universe and also be immortal. In other words, we are, we are from what was never created and we will never die. And at the same time, you need to have a sense of, of your involvement with the world, right? <clears throat> so that's the, stage, that's the stage of who we are. And when I say this... Uh, uh, bigger than the universe right uh, that's how remote viewing works you know you can anybody on the planet earth can sit here in their in their in their up uh, in their room and, and play around and they can they can see a you know a, a base on mars or they can see you know another planet or they can you know we're we're, we're absolutely inclusively connected that's what that's what uh entanglement is entanglement is like you have entangled particles, right? And every in particle is entangled with other particles. But also, the particles are entangled with themselves in the past and themselves in the future. Yeah? And when we get into, when we get into later on talking about uh, the law of repulsion, is, is you can use that, in, that entanglement kind of thing. So we're a, we're a connected being, and and not only that, we're not just a single being. We're multiple beings. We're we're connected to the to totality. So we're we're omniphrenic, meaning all have all consciousness connected to us. Anyway, 
let's get to Harold's Law. I think that's a good place to start. Okay, let's let me let me uh, do the screen share if I got permission. Yes, you do. Okay, now now this is, this is good because I I set it up. If you if you can expand your consciousness out to the to bigger than the universe, and then you look then you then you can turn around and look back at what's going on, and when you look back, what you find is is consciousness as spirit and will, which are thought and feelings cannot be separated or disconnected. They can only be denied or ignored. And this is kind of, I'm going to just going to build up some understanding there. Spirit and will that is light and darkness, man and woman. Um, you know, it is basically everything. Everything has a spirit to it. Everything has a will. Everything has a thought. Everything has a feeling. The whole universe is based on those two principles. Out of that comes magnetic mag magnetism. And electricity so electromagnetism is spirit and will right and that's the that's where the powers and it's also going back to the ground of being is absolute inclusivity and unconditional love so all this implies that spirit and will have this unconditional love thing going on in its purest form but it can be it can also be twisted Okay, this mean this means the Herald's law number two is everything is conscious is conscious spirit and will. That's what everything is. Every atom is spirit and will. And all matter is a state of conscious being and all, all things are beings. This is real important to understand that uh, everything is a being. Words are beings. Trees, grass, atoms, molecules, galaxies, they're all beings. You can, in other words, you can interface with them and talk to them and they can talk to you. So everything is conscious beings. We have need to get to it. And that goes to the will side, the mind side, which is the thought side, likes to see everything as, you know, a tree is made of leaves and roots and this and it chops it all up. But it doesn't really consider the tree as a conscious being or an atom or a molecule or a metal or a rock. They're all conscious beings, which is kind of important when you because to say a rock is a rock. Uh, and it doesn't have any consciousness is completely not true. But you, can, you, everybody builds a reality based on the denial of the consciousness of the rock. And so therefore, we don't see our cars as conscious beings, but they are. So is our, so is our house. Okay, now we're going to get into some more of the nitty gritty, right? Yeah. So you cannot create or destroy spirit and will beings because they're fundamental. They are, the, they are the fields. You cannot just create or destroy spirit and will beings. You can only deny, ignore, or modify your sense impression of them. So words are denials of reality. Words are the denial of re reality. You know, when I say I'm Mike Harrell and I'm this and I'm that, right? That's the deny. That's the labels that I'm putting on myself. That that just by the just by the uh, energy it takes to focus it denies that I'm also bigger than the universe. I have all things included into me and I'm completely connected to all things. You see what I'm saying? That's what that's the function of words. That's the function of belief too. <coughs> okay. And now from the uh, 3A, right? You can only deny or deny or modify your sense impression of what's going on, right? And 3B is spirit and will that means the universe itself, the energy of the universe itself, conforms and then confirms. That means that confirms to you that this is true. When I say I'm Michael Harrell, I have all this confirmation and I'm confirmed. That's who I am, right? So the universe conforms and confirms to your denial, ignoring or modifying of, of your sense impression of them. There's the Big Bang Theory, right? Well, the Big Bang Theory has been been banged around for like 50 years. And, and uh, to me, it's, it's, it's completely full of holes. None of that stuff is true. But you have, you know, about 100,000 people who are teaching the Big Bang Theory even today, right? But then there's the Black Hole Theory. And the Black Hole Theory doesn't doesn't match up. There's another word. The Black Hole Universe doesn't match up with the 
with a uh, with the Big Bang universe. And then there's the Big Bounce, where, where there's a whole bunch of people who believe in the theory of the Big Bangs, which is an expansion and contraction of the universe. And then there's uh, the the uh, the uh, mathematical theory of the universe. Everything's mathematics, right? Then there's the information theory of the universe. The whole universe is done with ones and zeros, ons and offs. There's everything is just information just being moved back and forth. Okay, and then there's um, the geometry universe. Everything's geometric and everything has these shapes and colors and stuff. I mean, shapes and stuff. And then there's the uh, vibrational universe where everything is tones and vibrations and energy. And that this it, that that vibration that's the sound uh, is the music of the spheres, and that's how everything comes together. You see, you see. Now, how could one observable universe? And these are not all the theories. And there's more theories of uh, <laughs> a fractal. There's a fractal universe. There's the multiple universe. There's the there's the uh, uh, what is it the the Sims universe where it's all a video game, right? And every time that the people who have okay, and then let, let's just go on to with the, with the flat Earth, okay, the flat Earth theory, right? Now that that uh, the people throw that out there, the flat Earth, and what does the universe do? It conforms to that theory and it confirms that theory. Those people are dead died in the world. They, they like, well, I got proof in here and proof there. And I'm confirmed. They can, can confirm what I'm saying here and there. So how can you have like 12 or 15 theories of the universe? Exactly. And everybody's saying that it's true. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. None of that stuff is true. This is really, really important to say that none of that stuff is true. Everybody who comes on talks about, oh, the Tartaria or or the Anunnaki came to Earth and did this and did that. And to me, the Anunnaki were a bunch of gangsters. That's all they were. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care what planet they came from. They're a bunch of gangsters, and all they did is create war and division and suffering mm -hmm. and, and, and crap. Right? They're pirates. You know, they had you had like a war and a, a war, the Syrian wars, the Palladian wars. You had the uh, the Draco. Uh, wars, the Andromeda Wars. These these guys have been fighting out there for thousands and thousands of years, and from them, uh, there's people who come and uh, they they pick out stupid little planets like ours and set up shop, mm -hmm. and uh, and then they start saying we're gods and here we got this technology and we got this and we start giving and then they start forming a reality for us and we buy into it, and we buy into it and we buy our buying into it. And the universe will conform and confirm what the Anunnaki are saying or what the Illuminati are saying or what anybody else are saying. I'll tell you how powerful this is. This is the same kind of power. You ever heard of the placebo effect? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so they, they did a lot of studies on this and, and uh, they found out that the people who, are, who go to a doctor and they get better, right? They start getting better in the car going to the doctor because they have this idea that going to the doctor is going to make them feel better. And then the whole entire universe will conform to that belief that if you go to the doctor, you're going to feel better. And then it confirms it. And then between 30 and 60% of going to the doctor is placebo. You see how that works? Yes. Oh, yeah. I've, uh, I've actually remember experiencing this firsthand uh, back whenever I used to actually uh, believe in the medical system. <laughs> okay. Now, what I've just described also, this 3B, the spirit and will confer conforms and confirms to your denial and ignoring and modifying of your sense and impression of them. Um. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what propaganda is. Yeah. Okay. When you start talking about propaganda, when we're fed propaganda by some entities who are nefarious or predators, right? If they feed enough propaganda to us for us to take that in, and then it makes us deny, ignore, or modify our sense impressions of what's actually going on in our own life, then, then that's what, uh, Manifest. What's what manifests? That's what. Yeah. That's what this whole ball of wax. All these. It's the same thing with history. Like you know, it, it, when you talk about history, there is no history. Even the ETs can't figure out the history, <laughs> because yeah. 
the the history as soon as you start to write down a timeline of history that immediately puts it at one point of view right and then that which means that you're denying ignoring or modifying your sense impression of that history you're not taking in, into account of the whole so we think of mostly of european history or indo indo-european history but that hasn't doesn't have anything to do with the uh Australian history or the South American history or the African history. You see what I'm saying? We're just getting a little slice of the pie. We're saying, oh, that's history. Yeah. And since that stuff is none of it is true, we build our life and our laws and everything is based on that. Yeah, we've this been living also, under a controlled perception since probably a since control, these... Complete denial of the whole entire universe in favor of their point of view, which right. and it happens to be a predator point of view. And it probably started with these beings that you were talking about that some um, call the Anunnaki and some believe are our gods, you know? Yeah, they're, no, they're not gods, they're gangsters, they're thugs, they're pirates, right? Like who, 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 and we're doing, we're doing the same thing. You know, you, you go off to this other planet and this other planet's not, not, uh, not technologically advanced. And, and, uh, you know, you show off all your, uh, mirrors and your flashlights and all that kind of stuff. And people, like, uh, people's minds are blown and they get all excited and, you know, and then they take over planets that way. And, and then there's, since there's no real law, you can't do that. Then, uh, that's, that's what goes on. But it's just in reality, it's, it's important to know what's really going on and in order to do that you expand yourself out and start looking at the whole picture a lot more and not come to any conclusions that it's this way x y and z because um the people who do hate and create war right they justify it in their mind that they're going to create war and they and you know it's like their their divine right or whatever they love to create war and then they, then the universe will conform and confirm that that war is, is a good thing to do and because of that we've been at war for whatever it is six or seven thousand years because war is what scrambles people's brains the most and lets them not see clearly what's really going on right yeah. And then then everybody who's involved in a war is blaming the other side. They're not blaming the, the leaders who are the instigators of the whole thing. You see what I'm saying? Right. It's like a it's like a big shell game. That's what I'm saying. These guys are thugs and gangsters. No, that is is we're so drenched in uh, in the religious beliefs and political you know and ide identifying with a country and identifying with a history. The more things that we can identify with is uh, the less power we have and the less uh, and, and the, the smaller our world actually becomes. And the way it is right now is we're acting like a bunch of slaves, which means we have no power, no connection, no ability to do anything. And that's that's the situation we have. Everybody who's ever been on your show has been if they talk about history or conspiracy theories or any of that kind of stuff. It all comes down to this, this, spirit and will confirms and conf conforms and confirms to your denial and ignoring and modifying of your sense impression of them. You, you, had this, you said this great thing the other day, you said, you know, when I go, uh, when I go to, to uh, the grocery store, I, I consider that going to an alternate reality. Yeah, yeah, I do, for sure. You know what I'm saying? And why is that? And the, why is that? Because if you're steeped into this conspiracy theories and to this forbidden knowledge and all this other kind of stuff, and, and it's like then that creates a whole world around you, right? Yeah. Then you go to the grocery store and like, well, why are these people acting normal? Mm. Why why are, you know why are these people buying Twinkies? And you know what you know it's just it's just like a, it's like another world. But that's that's the power of of being. Uh, immersed into um immersed into the denial of uh the the totality of reality you know or ignoring the right. totality of reality if we ignore and, ourselves and preference for others well we have so many people that is even doing another layer of this within this so-called truth community where they they latch on to some of these theories so hard and so much that it will actually destroy aspects of their own lives oh yeah 
You can see that in the Bigfoot community, the UFO mm. community. There's UFO community that people have gotten divorced and gotten put, you know, and gotten their kids taken away from them. Same thing with the, you know, and, and that's, that's because they're stuck in one slice of the pie, one mm -hmm. view, which is, and it goes back to absolute inclusivity. When you go, when you go to exclusive, you know, you lost something. It's exclusively this way. That's what a theory, you know, Big Bang is exclusively this way and it can't be any other way, right? Yeah. Then you've lost the plot, right? So uh, belief is not an asset. Belief is an, uh, as a liability. Mm. If he is, there's anything that you can do uh, to make yourself sort of more comfortable in this world is to is see how many beliefs you can actually do away with. Right. Right. Do you know, you want to hear something wild? Of course. There's these, these, this is wild, right? These people who are the Anunnaki or the, or the, or the, whoever they are, the people in power, they actually tell people that you're not God. Somebody told you that you're not God. Mm -hmm. And, and, and we go, okay, you know, that's okay. And then, and then, then they they write all these books that confirms and conforms and so you have to you conform like you're a sinner you're yeah. separate you're an individual you're small you're you, know, you say you're you're helpless you're you're a peasant you're you know what I'm saying and the people in charge are closer to God they're higher than God all this kind of crap yeah. that's totally a total ball faced lie who yeah. who was it who told you that you're not God when there is only one thing in the universe, there's only one mind, there's only one energy, there's only one love in the whole universe, and you're it as much as anything else. It's like trying to say to the cells in your body, "Well, you're not really, uh, you're not, you're not really Michael Harrell's hand. You're, right? you're, you're, you're something less than. You're, you're less than me, right? Yeah. <laughs> that, what, well, this, this doesn't make any sense. Every cell in our body can make a new me, right? So every cell in my body is me, right? It's just crazy to, to say that you're not God, and yet we have this great stigma. That little thing they did uh, with uh, the, uh, what is it, uh, where they burned the witches, they did that for 400 years. Yeah. And so it's that, and, and any, and then they, they take these guys who look, they look up the Percanius, per, what's Percanius, what's this guy's name? They looked up and he started said, "Hey, we're not the center of the universe. We're uh, we're just a little planet orbiting around here." Mm. But they were, they're trying to do that. They burn that guy as a stake, right? That's yeah. what they were doing. So there's a lot of energy being put into denying and obliterating any other point of view. Yes. Like so, here again, there's twelve di twelve different views of of what the uh, of of what the universe actually is. There's three hundred. There's three thousand six hundred. Uh, religions, which is views of what's going on in the world, and then there's then you come down to to uh, politics, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and medicine. Let's take take the medicine. There's only two kinds of medicine, which is natural medicine and then pharmaceutical medicine, right? That's so they only give you two choices. You know, they kind of they kind of rule out the energy and conscious healing, psychic healing. They they yeah. rule all that stuff out. Past life regression healings. They rule all that stuff out. You just got, you know, natural healing and then, uh, you know, big pharma healing. And then the same thing goes to um, to government. Okay, why is it when you have this infinite amount of things that you could possibly be? Why is it there's only like two or three forms of government? There's mm -hmm. tyranny. Uh, there's uh, you know king, king and queen. Uh, there's dictatorship, and then there's different forms of of de democratic republic. Right? Mm -hmm. That's it. And 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 we didn't we didn't vote for any of that stuff. It was just implied and pushed onto us, and we were. Uh, taught to be slaves and stuff like that. Well, they would like to give the illusion of choice for everything, even though a couple of companies own everything uh, on this planet. They they like <coughs> to split it up into Coke and Pepsi and Doritos and uh, Fritos, and you know make you think you have a choice between some of these things. Yeah, yeah, and we 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 uh, kind of throw away our power, you know, for a, a microwave oven and a and you know in a in a in a refrigerator that has a freezer in it, you know, these yeah. conveniences, it's just convenient. And in some ways it doesn't matter, you know, um, 
the sad part is that I tell you something, the most real thing that human beings have, right, is pain. Right? When you're in pain, like if you stub your toe, that's the realest thing there is for you right then, right? And it's the same thing with same thing with anything else, but if you but pain it's an amazing thing that happens. Uh, that when you have a near death experience and you've been in, you lived a life of pain and suffering and you go to have a near death experience and all of a sudden all that pain, all that illness, it's all it's all gone. So the most real thing that there is is pain, but there's an end to pain. And as soon as you die, you have an end to pain, and you can end your pain in this lifetime, which is preferred because that's kind of what you're supposed to do here is end that pain from the past. So it's, it's just this is the thing. The Gnostics hated the idea of of you. You ever heard of like the Sophia stories and the yep. Gnosticism and stuff? Mm -hmm. Well, that was the mind of men trying to come to grips with the chaos, and they call it chaos, of absolute inclusivity and unconditional love. So there's been a war between thought and feeling for a long time, with the th feelings taking a beating. Yeah. So yeah. the men are, are, are feel less than women, so women take a beating. Children feel less than than adults i mean children feel more than adults so whoever feels the most gets the beaten beaten down the most that's kind of the way it is the way it is because of the, this control mechanism and here again that that all was started at the beginning where where the i am which was the god separated away from uh the absolute inclusivity field because of the desire of the field itself oh. and lastly i want to talk about this 3b uh, the spirit and will confirms and conforms and confirms to your denial and ignoring or modifying of your sense impression of them and how that impl applies to the law of attraction. Right? Yeah. And I think you're kind of up on a law of attraction. Could you, could you tell what your view of what the, how the law of attraction works? Um, just based on my experience, if I put out energy that of something I want to achieve and it's positive energy and I consider myself on, uh, the right path and I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing in my, in my incarnation here, that if you put out that energy and it will, uh, and it's positive, it will attract what you're trying to achieve and manifest somehow in your life. And that's just my basic understanding of it. That's right. Uh, was that guy Neville? What's this guy's name? Uh, anyway, the law of attraction people, right? Uh -huh. They say a feeling is everything. So what happens is you create the reality that you want and then you step into that feeling, right? And the right. more you can surround yourself with the feeling of having it, of owning it, of it already being a reality for you, did that reality manifest? And that goes exactly what that three, uh, the th Herald's Law 3B is all about. The, the spirit and will conf conforms and confirms to your, you know, your wishes and your wills and your wants. Yeah. Yes, 100%. That's called the law of attraction, and it's very powerful. However, how many people do you think actually got the law of attraction going on? Probably not too many, and if they do, they probably don't realize what's going on. Yeah, and one of the reasons for that is is because of this predatory programming that we've got, mm -hmm. that we've had, you know. It's a, we live in a predatory culture. Our culture is predatory. Yes. And and uh, and to, in order to do that, you have to like uh, look forward, look look at authority. This is who we think the predator is. We think the predator is this monster over here, right? That's what's going on <laughs> in our in our in our uh, in our subconscious, right? Yeah. But the real the real mind is the predator. It's our whole culture. We have parents, right? You don't think of parents as predators, but what they are is they're trying to get you to fit into a predatory system. They say you got to go to school, so we have predatory schools. You got to give a, you got to be in this religion, and religion is totally predatory, right? You give us money because you're a sinner, and and you know, we're going to give you salvation. It's just like a shell game, right? And this, yeah. We have predatory science, predatory money and finance, predatory health, predatory insurance, predatory police. 
predatory justice systems. All media, media is predatory in local, state, and federal governments. If it, uh, if it is in your culture, then it is in your mind as a predator, right? 100%. That kind of puts, and this, that's, a, that's, and then we say, here, here's what we do, right? I say, well, this is my life. This is my country, right? This is, you know, this is my state. This is my town, right? This is the school I went to. This is my education. This is, this is the company that I get insurance for the car and health insurance, right? That claiming it is owning it. And when you claim it and own it, it manifests into reality, right? And that's why we have a very hard time of, you know, straightening things out because we've already owned, we own the predatory culture and that predatory culture is inside us. Yeah, yeah. it's been ingrained in us for so long. It's, it's a part of our reality. We're kind of born into this false, re false reality. And unfortunately, I believe there's a lot of people who may never have an experience to jar them out of the, the sleep state that they're in. And I'm very grateful that I did have a few experiences that were able to do that for me. And I think and a because lots, of that, of you dr you've been driven to, to put out alternative understandings. Mm. Yeah, like, hey, wait, there's more going on. Wait, there's more. There's more. There's, what about this? What about that? And that anytime you do that, you expand it out to get more and more inclusive. You're on the right track. Yes. You know, you're not a, only a, a flat earth guy, right? You, you're not only a, a Tatarian a mud flood guy. You're not only, a, you know, an, an Anunnaki uh, you know, oh, yeah. I don't. I usually DNA. don't settle belief on anything. You know, I I kind of yeah. consider it like an ocean. I'm just riding the wave, and because whenever you stamp it with a belief, it collapses the wave function, and that means you mm. can't be in all places at all times. You're there looking at it. At it. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's go back to the Kabbalion, which I mentioned a little while ago. You know, it's like there's a there's the law of the mind, right? And then there's the law of correspondence: as above, so below; as within, so without. And then there's the law of, of, uh, of opposites, right? Every opposite polarity, the law of polarity, good and bad, light and dark, uh, happy and sad, evil and, and, and whatever it is, good and evil. They're all polarities. So we have, and, and that's kind of interesting. You, if you practice the law of polarities and really work on it, then you begin to be free because you realize, I don't know if people don't really realize this, but that polarity have four, has four parts, right? There's the good and the evil, right? There's the good and evil, and then there's the balance between good and evil. And then number four is neti neti, which is beyond good and evil, right? So everything like, um, let's say, I know everything. Well, that's a polarity, right? I know nothing. That's a polarity. And there's a balance. Sometimes I know everything. Sometimes I know nothing. You know, I'm kind of in the middle. That's the three parts, right? But there's another step which you can take, which is neti neti. It's not, the, it's not about knowing everything. It's not about being balanced. And it's not about knowing nothing, right? There's something beyond that. Mm -hmm. And if you get to, if you understand that there's always something beyond that, whatever the polarity is, good or evil, then there's hundreds and hundreds of polarities, you know, uh, like I'm not God and then I am God, right? I'm not God, I am God. I'm a balance between be, being human and God, but then there's something beyond that. There's something even beyond God. So <clears throat> that's polarity. But here's the question. This is a $64 question. The, uh, you know, you're going to get your million dollar question, whatever it is. <laughs> if, if we've been, if we got dozens and dozens of, bu of books on, you know, think and grow rich and thinking positively and, and uh, the law of attraction and getting what you want and, and living your dreams and all that kind of stuff. How come? And that's a, that's a polarity. The law of attraction is a polarity. What's the other law of attraction? The other, I mean, the other law, the other law is the law. Of repulsion hmm. and that is how we're going to change the world you have to be able to purge and release and eject away from you the things that you don't want hmm. you take you take uh, like you know you get your house that you want and you live in that house for a long time right and it stays there it's not like it the house doesn't 
to catch on fire or something or you or you get evicted or something that does happen sometimes or you die but even so but the law of the law of repulsion if we taught the law of repulsion then we can change the world really fast because of because of entanglement right and the way the law of repulsion the way a law of attraction works is you have this image of what you do want you set up a scenario in your life that you can live in there. You can see what this house smells like, or you can see, feel like what the draw, what the car drives like, or you can, if you, if it's a woman or a man, you can touch them and feel them. And you know, you, the more you can get your senses involved in that reality of what you do want, the more it will manifest for you. And then you put energy into it, right? Mm. Now we do the exact same thing with uh, what we don't want, right? And, and when you do it with what you don't want it, take, it, that's what's called emotional release or the law of repulsion. And there's a lot of things that we don't want, right? When we get when we were people who are abused and beat up and uh, and messed up with, as a kid, we get these imprints of the stuff that that really has a hard time with. I mean, I've already told you, right, that uh, almost every major disease that we have is caused by uh, adverse childhood experiences yeah I, I read didn't i read that list that last time yeah. did i mm -hmm. yeah and that's just like 20 30 thing 20 things that you know heart disease are fibromyalgia all that kind of stuff yeah that's what we got inside us we got a lot of stuff inside us like i'm not good enough i'm not worthy i don't deserve and all that kind of stuff right and somebody told us that and the person who told us that, who was enculturating us into a predatory reality, were our parents or our brothers and sisters or people who did really mean stuff to us, right? right? Once, they, once this mean stuff or the, the uh, neglectful stuff or the heartless stuff was done to us, it's, it sticks to us, yeah? And once it sticks to us, it becomes... Uh, it becomes... The denial of the inclusivity of the whole universe. We collapse down to I am a wounded person. I'm less than. I'm not good enough person. Uh, you know, I have to. I have to be get help from authorities. I can't right. rely on myself. I'm not trustworthy and all that kind of crap. Well, we don't have the because we don't have the law of repulsion. We can't. We don't know how to get that stuff out. And that's what emotional release work is all about. Okay, I teach you. Know, this is a, this is purely an emotional thing here. I teach emotional healing, right? That's what uh, language lessons of hearts. The thing I teach. Mm -hmm. I'm on Facebook and I'm on uh, I'm on YouTube under Michael Harrell. But this is like now. So we have this war that's, with, that's going on within us, right? We have basically these demons that are in, inside of us that that we can't get rid of, or we were molested, or we were re rejected, or we were shamed and blamed, or whatever, or we were put in our place. You know how many times you get told no growing up? 56,000 times. That's a lot of collapse of your wave function, collapse of your hopes and dreams, and you wonder why people can't figure out to do something new. Yeah. Man, that reminds me of the time my one of my parents told me, you should just quit playing your guitar. You're never going to go anywhere with it. And yeah, they say shit like soul that. Soul crushing. Right? <laughs> soul crushing crap. That, and it could, it could be your best friend that does it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, the law of repulsion. The greatest jihad is, is to battle your own soul and fight the evil within yourself. Now we're talking, right? Yeah. We, the first whole part that I've been talking about was how we got polluted with the Herald's Law and the propaganda and, and, and the crooks and the gangsters and stuff that, that set up this predatory reality for us to live in. Yeah. And that we carry that predatory reality inside of us and we call that us. My education, my religion, my health care, my government. Yeah. And that means we carry around inside That's of That's something that I've been thinking about a lot recently, how, you know, how we identify it all as us. And I think that, yeah. that that would be a good start to not identify with all the bullshit that's going on on the planet, right? It is not us. Yeah. We carry inside of us our abusers and our inv invaders like emotional parasites we feed them our life and freedom not knowing ever knowing that they are not us but only imprints of the past events uh pretending to be us yeah 
And uh, unless you can let yourself express like a child in total meltdown, uh, then you'll never truly meet your authentic inner self. Let me skip forward here. Uh, this is a thing I'm going to, I'm going to do something on this, this coming up uh, next Saturday. This is a emotion released by just moaning and groaning, right? You, you connect your voice to your, to your, any stress that you have in your body or any feeling that you have in your body and you vibrate it out. You match your voice to the volume and the pitch and the quality of whatever that thing is. So it's, it's the sound of wounding and the sound of healing. That's, this is kind of, you lay down and you can just do this. Uh, it's called toning, uh, a soft emotional release. I'm not going to go through this. I got 30 slides here. I'm just going to pop through this stuff. And that's, this is really, really powerful work. You can, to, to vibrate what is inside you. What it, this stuff that's contrary to you, is like sticks into you. And, and when you can vibrate it out, that's like a form of release. Okay, then I'm going to talk about this one process that I teach, which is finding your lion heart and going full Kali, right? Uh, we happen to be in the age of Kali Yuga, and uh, and 2025 is the end of Kali Yuga, so this is the time for Kali Yuga, okay? And it just explains that this is what your inner, this is what that stuff, when people hurt you, it looks like this. This is what's going on inside of us, but we deny and ignore it in preference for like, uh, you know, our, our hamburger. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, to, so to, you the know, idea the idea is to find your. Go ahead. I was just going to ask. Uh, it, one of the techniques would be just to kind of uh, have a little bit of your own personal tantrum and then let this stuff out. That's exactly what what it is. Okay. It is primal scream. It's screaming your head off, and it, and it is. But it's more sophisticated because we're going to go back to the law of attraction, and now we're going to use the law of repulsion, which means you're going to create a scene in your head. You have a target. Let's see, go down here. This this is the law of repulsion. Yeah. You, get down here. You know, you, you got to go to a safe place to do it. You go to a park or to, uh, drive to a safe place in the country. Uh, you can rent a studio or something, or you can just go out. You, know, you can use your car. It's not so good, but yeah. You move your emotions as loud as possible at a target. Okay? Uh -huh. I'm going to go through here because I know you don't want to do a whole workshop on here. Uh, you, you, can use, you can use bats and stuff. The idea is to get so enraged, right? To get so enraged at your target, at your deepest wound. This is so important. You, so you go into the memory of, in the past of your deepest wound, whoever hurt you the most, and you start screaming at them. You got no right to do this, right? So you, you, you see the scene, right? And you direct the scene and you play the part of the hero. You win and save the day. So you're this whole time you're doing this sc screaming thing. Yeah, and now I got to here. And here's how you set up a scene. It's got four parts to it, right? The first one is over here is on, if uh, this, it would be on the left, your, your left hand side, is to feel your tear, tear, tear and, and uh, into flight and run a walk. This is the law of repulsion, right? So number one, you feel your fear. Somebody's saying something to you, confronting you, they're gonna hit you or they're gonna spank you or something. Right. Or a dog's gonna bite you, whatever. And you get into as much fear and terror as you can get into because you, you got to get that fear thing going because the fear is to take you away from danger and into a place of safety. And then you move that and then you move over into anger and rage by yelling and then eventually killing whoever that is. If it's a dog that's going to attack you and that's your scene, then you kill that dog. Then number three is you drop down into whatever the pain it is, the pain of the past, the pain of the dog gonna bite you. And, uh, and then you sit with that pain and feel that pain as much as you can. These, these two, the, the, the fear and the anger, are, are, you, you blow them up as big as you can in order that you can drop down and be able to have much more power to feel your own pain. The whole thing is about ending pain. Because if you don't have any pain, then you don't have any memory, then, then there's nothing there, right? That's that's why this thing works different than the, than a, than a pendulum, because the idea is to end the pain. When you end the pain from the past, then there's nothing left. And then number four is you feel victory. You can do all this in about five or ten minutes, but at the feeling of 
the feeling of pain at the bottom, when you feel your deepest personal wound, your primal pain, this is the, this is compassion. And, uh, and the con and connection at work. You can't, this is how you get compassion. Most people don't have compassion. And here's another scene, okay? If you, if you can't get into your deepest pain that there is, okay, so this is another, this is where it goes. So the first one is this dog is going to bite you. On, on, it should be on your right side. The dog's going to yeah. bite you. And then you get, uh, maybe you're going to protect your child or something. And then you, you go over here to number two, into, into your anger, into your rage, into your blind rage, into a murderous rage. And then you uh, fight by yelling and then killing the dog, right? Then you drop down to where the little child is being and you comfort the little child. You comfort yourself, whatever it is, in your spirit, heart, will, and body. And then you go up to victory, right? That's the four parts of this, this whatever scene you're doing, yeah? You beat on a pillow or whatever you're doing this all in your imagination right right yeah it just yeah yeah okay. audience we're not really killing a dog here so uh <laughs> no you're not killing a dog you're not going to kill your mother or your grandmother yeah, you know yeah. but you're going to kill their image if the image is of your mother the image is of your father or the image is of your abuser so then here's here he goes they take it up to the next level the hounds of hell are coming after you right there's a bigger fear bigger terror and then more rage and anger you know, and then you're, you know, you're like a, you know, an anime guy. You go killing all the, all the evil stuff, right? And then you drop down. And you feel the pain, and then the comfort, and then you do the comforting of the pain of yourself. It's about healing your, your uh, spirit and will. And then you go to feel victory, right? And this is really important because almost never in this predatory world do we ever feel victorious about anything. You know, you see what I'm saying? We don't have yeah. victories. Yeah. And a lot okay, of the victories what? that we do have are manufactured and uh, not authentic, you know, things yeah, like you gotta, uh, the, you war, the wars we fought and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Or you got to pay money for it. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, I yeah. Got, I'm, I'm, I'm successful. I got a $200 pair of tennis shoes on. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So why bring Kali Ma into the emotional release? Uh, she's a demon killer and a destroyer of worlds, and she kills the demons that God could not kill. The law of repulsion, okay? It's just that. Uh, so words are demons. Words are demons. People who are shouting or being mean at you, that is a demonic energy, and that energy is imprinted with their face. So if your dad was hard on you and, and uh, spanked you a lot, then he's given, he had demons inside of him, that was just demonic energy, and he was giving them to you. Yeah. Then you become imprinted with it, and now you're carrying around this demonic energy inside of you, and that's what you're killing. You're killing the energy, the image of the. You're living the experience of killing that demon inside you. Yeah. Right on. I love it. Yeah. Now, once you get to killing the demons, right? You get to killing the demons. Let's so let's say your dad was the guy who, who was who was the bad guy, right? And the mom was the mouse, or maybe the mom was a monster and the dad was a mouse. Whatever, it doesn't matter. You can kill them both because it's just energy. You want to sever. You don't want to carry that energy around inside of you because that's what's going to give you arthritis, bad kidneys, fibromyalgia, you know, uh, COPD, and all that kind of stuff. That's what gives you is this stored energy, this demonic events that haven't been repulsed, released, let go of, right? It hasn't been let go of. And so therefore it's living in you, inside you, in time, in your subconscious. So this is the event, right? Fear and tear, and then there's a more, this is just going into it more. But but then after you've like killed your, your primary target, which let's say it's your father this time, right? Mm. Then you go back you you just killed your dad. You say, I hate you. I'm going to kill you, right? And then you kill him, right? And when you've just killed your dad, then you're still enraged, but you have this bird's eye view, and there's your there's you, and then there's your parents. You kill both your parents, right? And then you go back in time and you kill your grandparents, right? And then your grand your great grandparents, right? And it goes on and on, and you you kill off every member of your family line that brought that demonic energy uh generation after generation into you this is really killer that, that to be able to do this because this is how you become a, a, a destroyer of worlds 
And here we get into the realms. Remember what I said, we have a predatory culture, predatory family, predatory films uh, of friends. And in a world, uh, we create a world of pain, a world of, of a predatory world. And then we go into the spirit world of, of demons and gods and angels and stuff. And how, why aren't they helping us? So they're predatory too. And then there's God that sometimes acts like a demon and not. So you kill your mom and pop, right? Then you kill the friends and family who who never helped you or, or like that. Then you kill the whole predatory society, right? And this is done in rage. Then you kill the world. You destroy the whole world that the demons have made. And then you, could, you just kill the, the whole spiritual realm, all the world of demons and, 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 and uh, angels and all stuff. You kill all that, right? You destroy the worlds. And then you kill a god, right? The god of that demon, the fake god, the, the demiurge. You kill that one. And that's what it means to go full Kali. Yeah? <laughs> that's what uh, that's, you do. That's what you do. And you can do that in, a, in like an murderous, murderous rage. But when you do that, right? Um, it all comes. It, it all comes down to this, you know, the stuff that we couldn't yeah. couldn't release when we were a kid, and then you feel victory, right? So that's the that's how it, that's how it goes. That's the law of repulsion. Wow. And you do you think it, it works best if you take it to the level of actually in your mind killing the, the people or uh, individuals that have harmed you in the past? Yeah, yeah. Because, and I'll tell you why. Because you're not killing them. Yeah? You're killing the image inside of you of them. In other words, let's say somebody robbed you. Right? They robbed you really bad. They took your computer. They took all your money. They cleaned out your bank account, right? Mm -hmm. Then you have this image of that guy who, who robbed you right. living inside of you. Let's say you knew him. He was like a friend or like you played poker with him or something, right? Mm -hmm. Then you have this image of this guy inside of you for the rest of your goddamn life mm -hmm. who robbed you, stole all your money, took your computer, wrecked your car, whatever he did, right? You have this image inside of you of that guy, and which means you have suppressed, denied rage and anger for that guy, right? And then, you know, that's what's calling for forgiveness, which is because you actually have pain because of that shit, right? So when you kill that guy, then, and, and then you're, you, um, you know, you're living in that, that, that drama, it's a, it's like shadow boxing. You're living in that shadow boxing where you strangle them, you kill them, you burn them, put them on fire, whatever, crucify them, whatever you want to do. When it's completely dead, then you're telling your subconscious that he is dead, dead, dead. He's no longer in you. It's gone. It's finished. Slate is clean. There's no reason to forgive. You don't forgive a dead guy. You see what I'm right. saying? There's no need for forgiveness. There's there's no need for any of that kind of stuff. We, we actually get told to forgive people who hurt us. Can you believe that? Don't forgive anybody for anything. You, if, if there's something that happened to you so bad that's calling for forgiveness, that's bothering you, then just take them out to a field and kill them, right? <laughs> kill them, right? Because right. it's inside you. This is imaginary inside you. Now, yeah. what happens? Yeah. This is the magic of, of entanglement. What happens is, if it's your, let's say it's your brother or your, or your, or your ex-wife or something like that, what happens is when you kill that pain inside of you, when you kill that whole scenario, that movie, that connected thing, you blow up the whole world, you kill the God, the demon God, and the whole planet of pain, right? When you do that, it's gone. And you're telling your subconscious it's gone, right? Guess what? It's gone in them too. Because it's a mirror, right? As above, so below, as within, so without. But it's also a mirror, right? You actually, you actually, you actually, it's like Ono Pono Pono, right? There's that guy, Dr. Hugh Lin, who, who uh, was a big uh, pro proponent of Ono Pono Pono. What he did is he was working in a mental institution. Now, did I tell you this story? Um, I don't think so. Yeah, he's a Hawaiian guy. He lived, he worked in a mental institution. He was doing the records keeping, basically record keeping to make sure everybody takes their drugs on time, sees their appointments and all that kind of stuff. And he was in the, in the ward for the criminally insane or the people who hurt other people and or hurt themselves 
And there was only like about 12 or 15 people in there because it's not a big, you know, whatever it is. That's what, that's all there was. And he would do review over them every uh, week and do the review so that people would have to come in and tell him what's going on. He wasn't a therapist or anything. He would do this whole Onoponopono thing inside of them. So here's this guy who killed his mother, right? And he's nuts and he killed his mother. And instead of carrying that image around inside himself, he did this whole Onoponopono thing where he said, I love you, please forgive me, thank you, right? He said that over and over. So he said that to the place where it was imprinted, which is in his belly, which is his will. And then over time, within a year, these people started to get better. Because for them to have that inner, their, their inner turmoil, when they projected their inner turmoil onto him, it was there was nothing there. He didn't accept that. He released that, right? That's another way of doing it. But what what it happens when you do it with your power is you get your power back, you get your memory. But you know, I'm sitting here talking about remembering things that happened from before the beginning of time, right? Remember, I'm telling you, I've been, so that's how that's that's how I got my memory back. All my lifetimes, I watched the earth cool down, all that kind of stuff, is because these things that you suppress, the pain that you suppress, suppresses your memory. So you get your memory back, you get your power back, you get your understandings of who you are back. And then you become sort of invincible. Like right now, I can honestly say I'm a destroyer of worlds and a God killer. Right? I mean, you know what I mean? Mm. And it just changes your whole reality. Right. Because why should you have to carry around all this? Other? Okay, so now it replies to the, to the, you know, that Schwab guy who's in the New World Order and the. Uh, yeah, Klaus Schwab. <laughs> yeah, Klaus Schwab, and and you know all the crap that's going on, right? Those guys have been doing. Those guys have been doing the same thing against us for a long time, and if when we when you start, if you had people who could actually go into uh, their rage and just destroy all that new world order stuff, the Illuminati stuff, the Anunnaki stuff, just destroy, it, kill them all, right? It's because you don't want that stuff inside you as a reality. Because if it is a reality inside you, then the universe will confirm and conform to that reality, and you don't want that. You want absolute inclusivity and unconditional love in there, which is who we really are, which is what 96% of the universe is. And right then 4% is matter. And of that 4%, there's only there's 4% of evil. <coughs> so evil is pretty small, but definitely you could change the world that way because that's the way the world was created. Right. The world was created by evil men plotting evil things against human beings. And that's what manifested. Yeah. When we reverse that around and we repulse or reject, uh, release that stuff, then we're free. We become sovereign, rulers out of our own inner kingdom. Yeah, man. That's uh, my story about the law of repulsion and how you absolutely got to do it. You look, if you don't pee, you're in problem. You got problems. <laughs> if you don't poop, you got problems. And if you can't get rid of your uh, traumas from the past, you got problems. You got to know how to do this release. You know, the emotional bowel movement, <laughs> yeah. if you will. <laughs> right on, man. Well, uh, for the for the last few minutes we have, I know you have something else you want to discuss called Team Inside Out. Let's get to that. I, this is working out just, just the way I want. Okay, Team Inside Out. So what I was just describing to you, the law of attraction and the law of repulsion are inside out movements. You do it inside you out, right? But our spiritual awakening is inside out, right? Our spiritual evolution is inside out. You don't, you know, even if you take ayahuasca, that's good. That's still an inside out kind of a thing because you have the experience based on this kind of stuff. And that experience sticks with you even after the ayahuasca is gone. You remember the, the whole thing, right? So that's team, that's the team inside out. The, the term came from the ETs. There's a, um, I was watching a show of this lady who was, who uh, was talking about going on a craft, right? And, and she went on the craft and they were doing some procedures on her. And she was saying to the, to the ET, she said, you know, my spiritual life has improved. My, my intelligence is raised. My energy is better. I'm on a higher vibration. And the ET who was working with her said, yeah, well, we're on, we're on, uh, we're all, all part of the team inside out, right? And this is why 
The reason why it's inside out is because the ETs know how to work on their inner energy, right? And if they can work on the inner energy, then that's what's going to manifest in reality. You see, that goes back to Harold's Law 3B. Mm. If they can work on the inner energy, then that's what's going to manifest the reality. So they want to... Uh, so who's on in the team inside out? Well, I just said the ETs. The ETs have picked up... Uh, they, they estimate it's just somewhere around... Um, 2.6, 2.7% of the population and in America, that would be what, 7 million people that they've contacted, worked on, upgraded them, changed their energy patterns, healed them, yeah, expanded their mind, had them going up and down on the craft a few times like an elevator. In other words, we have cellular memory of going invisible. There's people who can do it now. They can, tra they can teleport themselves now. They're learning that kind of stuff. So that's team inside out. But the first team inside out was the rock people, the elementals. So water, rocks, I mean, water, earth, air, and, and uh, fire, right? The rock people were responsible for electricity. The rock people said, we want, we, the human beings need electricity, they need light. So they put it in the energy of all these people around the world, to, uh, including Tesla, so how about getting this to playing around playing around with electricity and see about getting light so that was a, a consorted effort hmm. and then after that that they, they wanted radio and television then after that they wanted um you know it, the internet they wanted us to be able to, op to operate in something similar to the mind speak that everybody used to have all the time so the internet radio tv and all that stuff that comes from that comes from the rock people and the reason why it comes from in the uh, elementals is because the elementals are fundamental. They're the fundamental, right? It, we couldn't do anything if we're just floating around in space. You need a earth, you need air, you need water, you need that foundation. And right now, the electricity and the and the and the, uh, and the internet and all of all of videos and all a huge pouring of of information that's coming to us now. It, it, we needed that infrastructure first. So the, the first people were the team inside out. Right, the second people on the team team inside out is the angels, gods, and angels and uh, and masters and stuff like that. And how does that work? Well, since the 1960s and 1970s, there have been millions upon millions of people who've had near death experiences. And what happens when you have a near death experience is you leave your body, you go up, and all of a sudden there's all this light and there's love and you and all your problems are gone. There's nothing. It's nothing but bliss and, and, and like, and this is home and all that kind of stuff, right? Then you come back down and you go, wow, that's the most important. I remember this. And, and uh, remember I said about knowing everything and not, uh, I know everything, I know nothing. Mm -hmm. Right. And scientists go, you can't know everything. You can't know everything. Right. And then some little soccer mom in Ohio has a near death experience. And she said, you know, I was up there and I was surrounded by light and all my relatives were there. And then I realized I knew everything in the entire universe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. that's team inside out. Okay, so yeah. this whole near death experience thing with the angels and the gods and all that kind of stuff that, that, that going up and down, right, and then writing the books and doing the TV shows and the radio shows, that's team inside out, right? Then uh, we already talked about the ETs and there's like it's around 200 ETs that are actively engaged with the human the human race now. There's around two or three thousand that come and visit the planet but they just do a flyby but there's about 200 that are engaged and of those 200 i don't know how many 20 or 30 are on actual councils and they're talking to the governments and stuff like that but that's they're all, they're all working teams inside out you don't hear them coming and saying well here's the here's the manifesto of what to do right they yeah. don't say that they give people the personal experiences right then you have the Sasquatch, pure team inside out. Those guys are lifting up people's consciousness and making things change. I got a message the other day. I got a little, they showed me a little vision where they had around a thousand Sasquatch or connected to four million people. Wow. Yeah, four million people. And, and, and they watch every video that they watch. They watch where the person's going, how they evolve, if they're ready to have an experience or not, and they give them an experience. And the whole thing about the team inside out is, is they're not in your face, right? 
You don't, in other words, you don't sit down with a Sasquatch and have a talk. You don't sit down with a E.T. and have a talk. You don't sit down with an angel, Archangel Michael or something and have them sitting in your living room and having drinking a beer or something. That's, you know what I'm saying? They're doing this by urges and, and awakenings and energy vibrations and stuff like that. Yeah. Synchronicities, okay, more team energy, in, yeah. More team inside out. All the people who are doing past life regressions and people who are doing emotional healing work and like people like me or you know, teaching about the law of repulsion and, and emotional release work, all that, that's been going on for like, I don't know, since the 70s. Everybody beca became, uh, you know, life coaches and psych psychiatrists and explorers of consciousness, right? And uh, and then people people like you is also on Team Inside Out. There's a lot of people who are trying to get to the inner core of what's going on. And there's people back in history too that do the Team Inside Out. But there's some major players right now involved with our evolution and our awakening and our support it is not just us the the earth the air the fire the water the angels the ets the animals the animal communicators the people who are doing healers the people who are teaching the people who are teaching how to see without your eyes people who are teaching levitate levitation people who are teaching meditation okay and all the healers that are going on in the world, they're all on Team Inside Out. And I, I just wanted to put that out there because I'm, you were talking a lot, of, like a lot of discouraging stuff. There is more stuff going our way than we could even shake a stick at. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Woohoo! Uh, exactly. I felt for a, you know, a very long time that we are in a very important time, but it is our time. It's our time to to remember and to learn who we were and embrace these these consciousness uh, abilities that we've always had and move forward with it. So I'm excited about this time for sure. Michael, this was fantastic again. Um, let the audience know before we close out if they want to get in touch with you, if they want to uh, find out more about you and uh, uh, and learn from me. What's the best way for they can do so? Well, I have a group on Facebook called uh, Language Lessons of the Heart, in which I teach my uh, emotional healing work for free. Can you imagine? Look, the, can you imagine? There's people out there. This this kind of blows my mind. There's people out there. You take a wounded person, and then you have to have them pay to be healed right. when they didn't have to pay anything to get wounded. That just doesn't <laughs> comprehend to me. But anyway, my all my stuff's for free. So Language Lessons of the Heart on Facebook. And then I have Michael Harrell on YouTube, Michael, just Michael Harrell, it's a channel. And in there I have workshops, live workshops and explanations. I'll have the whole thing of how to heal your emotional body, which also heals your physical body. So if you have physical illness or emotional illness or mental illness, you can do this and it, and, uh, it would definitely helps because that's the way it works. And I have a like page on Facebook too. So Michael Harrell on Facebook and Michael Harrell on um on YouTube. Excellent, yeah. man. And I highly recommend everyone go back and listen to the first episode we did. And uh, we'll do it again and get even deeper next time. Yeah, there's always more. But uh, this is a lot today, you know, because yeah. when I put it, basically talked about how everything works and how you can beat the system, right? How do you, how do you win the war on the inside? Right? That's what people need to know. That's the only drawback I, we got uh, on, on the... Uh, you know the, the truther net networks right the truthers right. is so little of them talk about the solutions they yes. they just they're amplified by the problem which manifests the problem when you amplify the problem you manifest the problem you got to right. cut it off yeah and you can do that it's a lot of fun too your energy goes through the roof when you do that you can actually get your kundalini to move by doing that because you're doing primal release work yeah Man, it is Kali. Kali's Tantra. Yeah. Kundalini well, this is something tantra. that, uh, man, it's, it's a solution. It's a solution right in front of everybody. So uh, I, th I highly suggest everyone take advantage of this information. And Michael uh, will definitely do this again soon. All right. Till next time, everyone, have an excellent evening. We'll talk again tomorrow. See you all then.